and happy Halloween. I have some crafty projects to bring your way. To start with today, we will be making a broom. What better symbol for Halloween, other than the pumpkin maybe, than a witch's broom? Um, in this case, this is not necessarily a witch's broom, but if you'd like to use it as a, with a costume, I think it would be great. It's also a very old style broom. It's very functional. Um, its name tells you what it's for. This is style is called a cobweb catcher broom. And if you have high ceilings like I do, this broom with its long handle will reach way up in the corners to snag any cobweb that can be hiding there. Hence the name. It is a cobweb catcher. It's very easy to do. So if you'll stay with me, we'll get started. You will need various supplies to make your broom. The most important part is the broom straw. I buy mine from R.E. Caddy in Greensboro, North Carolina. They are a broom making supply company. Um, they have Mexican broom corn, which is the type that I have here. It is straighter. Um, the seeds are not usually that prevalent on it, although if you look carefully you can see um, some of the seeds still attached. There is another type of broom corn called Hungarian broom corn which is a little more reddish in color. The stalks are a little bit curlier and they have many more seeds that will come attached to them. The other part of the broom that you'll be needing to make is the handle. And as you can see here on the table, I have a piece of bamboo that I have drilled a hole in toward the end. Um, you can also buy pre-made broom handles um, from the same supplier, RE Caddy. Other items needed to make the broom include wax linen. Uh, you can use other cording. I find the wax linen is great because it kind of sticks to itself a little bit. It's not slick and so um, especially for people who don't have the most hand strength um, they are better able to get this tied off and fastened tightly. You will need some sort of sharp knife to cut the broom's um, straw stalks down a little bit to make them fit nicer more nicely onto the bamboo or the wood handle, whichever you use. You also need an extremely sharp and strong needle. This particular one was given to me by the um, lady who taught me how to make brooms years ago. It has an upturned um, section where the eye goes and so that helps me push the needle through without needing a thimble. Otherwise, I would suggest you get a thimble um, to sort of save your, your fingers, your thumbs pushing it through. Okay, I have the broom straw over here, and I have it already soaking in some water. As you can see, I have it in my nice little plastic cauldron, and it has been soaking a few minutes, so I'm going to get it out and see if I can't go ahead and start shaving part of the stalk down. Okay, as you can see, the end of this stalk is a little bit blunt. It's also fairly hollow, which is a good thing because it will carve out easily. When you put the stalks up to the, whole, the broom handle, they are going to fit around. And the stalks are round in general, so what I want to do to carve this down a bit to make it lie flatter is to come up not to where the pretty part starts up here, but come down about, say, maybe an inch or so. And I come in at an angle 
And by the way, this is not a craft here for small children. This is the parents doing it for the kids if you want to make a broom for your kids. Okay? Now, you can see since it's been soaking, this is coming out very nicely and this will fit flatter up against the handle. So I'm going to go ahead and get all my stalks cut back and then we'll move on to the next step. One more. Okay, you want to see one more? Let's do one more. I'm going to come down about an inch here carefully, carefully starting it and then moving my hand out of the way. Pull towards you. The knife will just slide right through the stalk if you have soaked it long enough. Alright, two down. I'll be back when the rest are finished.